Thank you for joining us again on TVC Breakfast. Well, the Minister of Power, Adibaya Adilabu, says electricity subsidy cannot be sustained and that Nigeria must begin to move towards a cost-effective tariff model. Mr. Adilabu addressed a news conference in Abuja where he mentioned that the country is currently indebted to the tune of 1.3 trillion naira to generating companies and another $1.3 billion for gas companies. Abid Alawal tells us more. We are also establishing a customer complaint escalation center. This year, 450 billion naira was budgeted for subsidy, but the ministry needs over 2 trillion naira to pay for it. Minister of Power, Adebayo Adelabu, said state governments will now be allowed to generate electricity independently to supply power to their state. Over 50 billion naira has been earmarked in the 2024 budget to build mini grids to supply power to remote areas. He read a riot act to the electricity distribution companies, urging them to sit up or have their licenses withdrawn. It is either we look for money at all costs to fund the subsidy because of the political situation of the country and the hardship people are passing through, or we bite the bullet and everybody understands, okay, let's bring the roof down first. Let's reflect everything on market commercial basis. Then we start a rebuilding because it is postponing the evil days if you continue anyway. So I am not calling for removal of subsidy before they misquote me. But it's a decision for the entirety of the country to decide. These are assets that we spend the, country, the, the country's money on and our brothers, part of us, who deliberately sabotage it. So you can see that some people are hiding somewhere that do not want this sector to work. The minister also said the frequent collapse of the grid, which has occurred about six times between December 2023 and February this year, is caused by shortage of gas, old and obsolete machines in the grid value chain, low capacity of evacuate generated power, and destruction of power stations in some part of the northeast geopolitical zone of the country. Habib Alawal, TVC News, Abuja. Joining us now from our Abuja studio is the Executive Director of Research and Advocacy of the Association of Nigeria Electricity Distributors, Sunday Odunto. Thank you very much for joining us again on TVC Breakfast. What's your perspective to this revelation? Right. So what do you make of these revelations by the power minister? Well, I think the minister has... Um, um, set the obvious. Um, where I come from in Abelkota, there's this uh, town in Yoruba where they say, e that is to say, if you know, you are the one that know your pocket. If you are the head of the household and uh, there's a need to buy full stuff, you have to choose the one that you think your pocket can sustain. So I think that is exactly what the minister seemed to have said. Uh, I'm not in government, so we are operators. Uh, the issue of subsidy or no subsidy is a decision for the government to take. Um, what Nigerian people are interested in is for them to have electricity. The need for electricity in the country, sufficient electricity. What the operators want, generation companies, transmission companies, and distribution companies, what they want is for them to have the ability to supply electricity and recover their cost of doing the business. So when you look at this, at the end of the day, the point is just that somebody has to pick up the bill. Somebody has to pay for the shortfall. Somebody has to ensure that system run efficiently. We have to make sure that we put Nigeria first. We have to make sure that there is no need for emotion or sentiment. We also have to make sure that we look at the demography, the different levels of customers. 
and their ability to pay. Again, that is for the government. This is where the role of government is very important in any society. I wish we have a database in this country that can accurately differentiate between the poor, the rich, and the older people in the society. So that when you're even talking about subsidy, you can target the right people. Um, I do not think my brother who lives in uh, Banana Island in Lagos, or my friend in Asuko in Abuja, want or should be subsidized, whether you're talking about petrol, electricity, or any other thing. But I also know that my other friend and classmate, who is a class teacher somewhere in the state, um, also need to be looked at in terms of what he can afford, whether he can actually afford the cost of petrol or electricity. So this is the uh, controversy and the argument that comes out of the issue of subsidy. But in summary, what I'm saying is that uh, it is for the government to decide whether or not they want to subsidize electricity. But if they say they cannot su sustain it or they cannot afford it, and we have looked at all other things as a nation, including, of course, reducing the size of government and blocking wastages, it's a debate for Nigerians to have. For me, representing a set of operators, what we are interested in is to be able to give electricity to Nigerians sufficiently, efficiently, and ensure that people have light. That is our own business. All right, Mr. Odonto, uh, quite interesting. Um, I can see that um, you are actually laying the cards on the table for the government to decide which way to go. But all the same, trust me, the government also listens to people like you, you know, when you offer advices, and that's the reason why we're having you this morning. Um, subsidy or no subsidy? Because the uh, Minister of Power already said that it is either we leave the subsidy or we, we, or we bite the bullet. And then he said something again, which I termed as vague accusations. They said the power sector is jinxed. And the reason why it has not functioned, or it has not worked well optimally, is due to some saboteurs who had been ensuring, who are making sure that it doesn't work. Could you help us understand whether there are some people right there in one corner who are bent on not making Nigeria electricity? For instance, the electricity sector, the power sector, work. To, to what advantage would you say? Because this is after privatization. Okay. Um, what I can say is that when we talk about the issue of sabotage, I personally, and this is my personal opinion, please, I personally agree with the minister that there are individuals, there are people that do not want this sector to succeed. But even that suspicion or that um, assertion uh, has different uh, connotations to it. Some people in some businesses will not want there to be electricity from the grid so that they can sell their product. Because the day you have 24-hour electricity in Nigeria, some people's business, they will have to pack it up. That's one aspect. Some people um, have seen Nigeria as a country where you can be corrupt and get away with it, where there are no consequences for our action, where people think they can get away with murder. Because there are no consequences, because people have not been sent to jail at different level for different reasons or for different acts of corruption. So some people everywhere feel that they can do things and get away with it. So to that extent, without getting unnecessarily controversial on issues that does not concern me or concern my discourse, our own issue is that let us sit down, like the minister said, should we, bring the, should we buy the bullet? Well, let us sit down, look at the system, the situation, ask ourselves the question that is important. Why is it that there's no light? How come that we don't have enough electricity? Why is it that we still have estimated billing? How come that we have people stealing energy right and left from Ikejajiari to Asokoro, Maitama, to Bompai in Kano. Why is it that we have the rich and the poor stealing right, left, and center? Why is it that when we take chiefs to court, the magistrates and in some cases even high court judges, they will leave the case there, delay and frustrate issues 
for the next two years. Why is it that some lawyers are interested in corruption? By the way, I'm a lawyer. I'm a proud lawyer for that matter. How come that we have people who rather stall cases, sabotage the country, and ensure that all they are interested in is their pocket? Again, that's another topic. The topic here is let us work towards getting liquidity for the Nigerian electricity uh, market. Until we are liquid, until there is that cost recovery by the Jenkos, by the Junction Company, and the Discos. We'll be talking about this in five years, old, my brother. We'll come back here and we'll be saying the same thing. I was there 10 years ago. I keep reminding people I've been doing this job since 2015. I've been talking about the same thing. Yes, there have been some improvement, but we can do better. And it cannot be better as long as even government, government, ministry, departments, and agencies are still owing billions. If government don't pay their bill, what are you talking about when you are talking about individuals? Again, I'm not here for controversy. If you ask me to state the fact, I'm an Egbamano, I don't know how to say anything else than the truth and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Right. And uh, <laughs> you've said a lot uh, already. Vintage, uh, like I always say, vintage Sunday or don't talk. But you're, you're speaking about, you know, Nigerians, the basic need Nigerians need is adequate, regular power supply. You've also spoken about uh, the need for liquidity in uh, this uh, sector. Uh, Mr. Adelabu even said something in that um, you know, direction that, uh, all right, he's not saying that subsidies should be removed, but there is a humongous debt uh, in the way, and he's now saying perhaps we should go the way of pumping in more funds into the power sector or going by way of uh, debt instruments. I, I wonder which look uh, sustainable to you. Speaking for the distributors, of course. Well, as I said, this question you are asking me is best for the Honorable Minister and the federal government to answer. The reason is that we all know what the problem is. If you are the head of your home and you have three wives and nine children, they have to eat all. Any debate about watching uh, theater on television cannot be sustainable until they eat. So Nigeria wants electricity. So we now need to look at how best we can make the sector liquid. And I'm going to thank the federal government for their intention to clear the debt that's already there. We have a lot of shortfall that, is, that needs to be cleared. Well, even when they clear that, we now have to talk about going forward. So whichever option the federal government choose, what matters most is for the operators, because we need to encourage investors to come to this country and invest in this sector. If you don't do things that will encourage investors, we're just talking, talking, we're just playing with words. Talk is cheap. For me, we need to walk the talk. And the only way to do that is to be frank is not to be emotional. A lot of people have been uh, criticizing the Honorable Minister, criticizing the discos. Some people don't even know the difference between Jenko's transmission and disco. Anything that goes wrong is disco. No problem. Instead of all those personal attacks, like even a professor did, one Jesha professor abused me yesterday just for saying the truth. But that is not supposed to be the case. What we should do is to look for solutions. And we all know the problem. We all know possible solutions. We can't just be coming, talking about, do this, do that. Let the government sit down and be very firm and take a decision. And as we do that, we should also look at where there are leakages in everything we do and ensure that people that are being asked to pay more for electricity, let them look at the system and feel satisfied. Because at the end of the day, people want electricity. They want there to be efficiency. And efficiency is linked to pricing. When you don't pay me the correct price, I'll be cutting corner out. And people don't like hearing the truth. If you pay the right price for a product, you get a good product. When I used bread the other day, uh, as an analogy, some people came online and were abusing, saying that uh, after all they eat bread. Look, if you don't pay Yamulika, the best seller, the correct price, or you steal that bread, part of the loaves of bread, if those ones are stolen, 
there won't be nine long with the bread though. You have your bread naked. And you know that when you expose bread, you know what will happen to it. So I think the issue of appropriate pricing of electricity is important. But the issue of people's income, people's situation is also important. So we have to look at all of these things together. But all of these are in the bucket of the federal government and state government of Nigeria. That's the way I look at it. It's still very um, efficient any day, any time, if one has um, um, regular electricity or regular power supply uh, as against running on generators and other alternative means of generating power. Uh, do you, but one thing is uh, for the government to clear the debt and then they'll still continue to subsidize the, the, power, uh, the electricity. But Nigerians will say if the subsidy is removed, we, this, the subsidy removed from the petrol, uh, from, from petrol, uh, on petrol rather, and now if subsidy is taken out of electricity, the question Nigerians are already asking is what then do we benefit from the government? How do you address this, this, this um, you know, query from Nigerians? Thank you very much, my dear brother. Again, I want to remind you that I'm Sunday or so I'm speaking for the discourse. So we are businessmen. We are not in government. It is Shivade Labu that should be brought here to answer that question. I'm sure Shivade Labu will be in a good position to give an answer as to what we want Nigerians to do. But well, remember one thing. Remember. Mr. Aluton, the intention is not to uh, make you, you know, speak in lieu of Mr. Adelabu. It is as a Nigerian, as a businessman, and um, the kind of uh, advice you would like to offer the government. That is the reason why we, we are having this conversation with you. We understand that you are not in... Okay. You are, you are not in okay. Thank you. For me, um, if the government feel that they cannot sustain uh, subsidy payments, then they have to put certain things in place. They have to look at certain category of citizens that require help. And I, I will speak to my experience in the United Kingdom where I lived before I came here to take this job. Um, in the UK, for years up to now, every year, around November, October, November, every year, the British government sends check. They send money to old people. I think people 70 and over. For them to be able to pay for electricity and gas during winter, they send them that allowance to relieve them. That is a form of subsidy. But you see, that subsidy is not sending money to a very rich man or to a young man like me that was working then. So what I'm saying is that we need to go back to basic. Let's sit down and work things out. Beginning with NIN, BVN, let's link everything we have together. Let's know the statistics. Let's know the figure. Let us identify Nigerians that need help. So instead of subsidizing petrol for everybody, including the owners of Bentley and Rolls Royce, why not subsidize it and find a way to ensure that public transportation work that's for petrol? For electricity, Similar thing, we can begin to look at how to target the needy. And in Nigeria, when we talk about needy, sometimes they mix it up. Because when you even talk about market women, for instance, I have uh, friends who are market women. Some of them sell wussy wussy, some of them sell rice. Some are richer than the other. So you cannot say, I want to give subsidy for rice sellers. So... Should you subsidize right distributors as against retailers who are just small uh, business women? These are the kind of conversations that government needs to have. At all levels, I think we need to look at those who need help. I believe that is the way to go. But to now talk about subsidy, whether or not, if the government said they cannot sustain it, I will tell you what will happen. If Nigerians insist that government should continue to, to subsidize, they will not pay. At the beginning of privatization in 2000 and 13. There was a promise made by the government of Mr. Jonathan. Um, God bless him. But he didn't pay, maybe because they could not pay. So there's one thing, it's one thing to give a promise that I will subsidize. It's another thing to pay up. And when you don't pay, then you have shortfalls. Why can't we once and for all agree on the way forward? So my point is the poor, the weak, and the needy, and the low-income earners. 
need to be assisted. How government will do it is left for government. But I think something that is missing in this country is data. I, I, and I don't see many people in government talking about that. Data. Until we have a good, a verifiable, a dependable database, there are so many things we cannot do. Even for us in this uh, business of electricity, I can assure you that we have problems sometimes with numbering. When you go to some street to give them bill, some people don't have a credible address. Some houses will turn one at the back, one in front. You will even know which one is number two. So I think government need to first of all do the issue of uh, database. After that, now begin to know those who require help. Then after that, let's face reality. Those who can afford to pay, let them pay. There are some customers that we have in this, uh, in this um, industry now who are always willing to pay. What they want is efficient service because it is cheaper, five times cheaper to use electricity from the grid than to use your generator. And you said that, that is the truth. So we want to give electricity, but we can only do so if there's liquidity. And people should please put themselves in the position of the Genkos, the transmission company of Nigeria, and of course the distribution companies. If you are doing a business where you are underselling the product or where the product is being stolen right, left, and center, and people don't seem to care to look at that, how do you expect them to be efficient? How do you expect to succeed in any business where you cannot recover your cost? It's about cost, it's about pricing, it's about cost recovery. Thank you. Right. And um, earlier on, you spoke about yeah, you know, the perennial challenges in the power sector, the issue of theft. Uh, earlier on, you, know, you spoke about how this issue of theft is not even caught out for only those whom we call poor, the poor, that even you know, very uh, wealthy Nigerians are also guilty of this. And you know, now that you know, Adebayo Adelabo is manning uh, the ministry and all of that, speaking for the discos now, uh, and how these challenges particularly hamper your work. I'm just wondering what kind of engagements and uh, how promising are uh, the engagement between discos and the federal government to clear these uh, lingering gray areas? Well, the way Nigeria is structured, uh, the people in government are the masters. So whether you are a dangote, or you're a disco, you still operate your business under the direction or directive or supervision of the masters. So what I'm saying is that it is the honorable minister and of course the government who can always provide that enabling environment, the necessary rapport, the uh, accessibility to sit down with them and have discussions. We have had in this country, and I'm not talking about Mr. De Labu now, as a person, we have had occasion in this country many years ago when we cannot even speak to government. But we are seen as small fries. We are too small to have uh, engagement with government. We are just a bloody set of uh, discourse. So until we begin to see every state stakeholder as being very important, that is the only time you can have progress in Nigeria. This is not limited to uh, the power sector. This is about all sectors. We should be able to take either concern or complaint. Like for us, we receive a lot of complaints from Nigerians. We know where it pinches them. We know what the problem is. So we should be able to take this thing to them. It is not about selecting a few people in a closed door meeting and they say you are not a licensee, you cannot come in. Until we begin to have a more open, more flexible, more liberal, a more listening system. That's when some of us can talk. But when that is one is not available, this is the only platform. We come, we talk, we go, and we've been doing that for 10 years. Thank you. Yeah, so in, in order not to do that for 10 years, I, I guess that's one of the reasons why the president signed uh, the Electricity Amendment um, Act, uh, the Electric Electricity Act Amendment Bill into law. And I want you to speak to that, one of, one of which is the Jenkos to develop their host communities. And also, uh, the Act introduces changes to licensing requirements for various aspects of electricity sector, including generation, transmission, and distribution, one of which chain you, you, you involved. Could, could you talk to us about how you feel this will uh, impact the involvement of private entities in, in NESI, NESI? 
Thank you very much. I will do that, but I want to say something first. I want to speak directly to the president. I want this, our new president, to please take time to watch television and watch all channels. Channel TV, TBC, Arise, Silverboard, NTA. That's number one. Don't allow yourself to be caged. In those days when we were in the trenches, the Nadeco days in the UK, you watch television a lot. So I hope the president is able to watch TV for himself, to, for him to, to see things by himself, not by what some people write and give to him. That's number one for the president. But he's also our old president. Number two, that electricity act, that aspect where they ask the gen codes to uh, set aside 5% of their revenue. You see, that is all income. They didn't say 5% of their profit. I think they need to go and look back at that law again. For the Genkos, we have to make sure they don't die. Oh. If the Genkos are doing well, the transmission and distribution will be doing well. If the Genkos continue to be in debt, there won't be light in this country. Oh. We'll wake up one day, no light. Because they cannot, anything they cannot sustain, don't let us push it to their table. Let us think mm -hmm. about their own, the difficulties. Let us think about their own situation too. Asking them to put down uh, five percent of their earnings of, of their revenue. That means you are talking that their operational expenses, operational expenditure, or capital expenditure. That is from where they will take the five percent. And once they do that, that can also limit their ability to do what they are doing. And in terms of uh, taking care of the host communities, fine, fantastic. But I also want people to, uh, and I've said that on another platform, people should remember that the environmental uh, impact assessment, as far as the power plants are concerned, you cannot compare that with that of other industry like the oil industry. So when people are talking about agitation or the need to do uh, things, and I'm aware that the Genkos already do a lot of uh, corporate social responsibilities, all over, all of them, they do it. But I'm saying that this thing will be a pass-through if we insist that they have to set aside 5% of their revenue before profit, or not their profit. If you say that is the way it should go, then they will pass this thing back to our regulator. And then it will become a pass-through, and the end user will pay for it. Then you are looking for a decrease in tariff. That's the fact. So I think we should look at it very well and ensure that while we're, the intention is very good to take care and develop the host communities. But how we do it matters a lot. We should differentiate between uh, operation, taking money from operational expenses, capital expenses, or talking about profit. Then we should also look at the percentage. 5% of revenue is a lot of money. So please, let us uh, 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 um, appeal to the National Assembly and to the federal government to please look at it again and see what they can do so that we do not cripple the generation complex. That's my opinion. Right, and uh, you know, quickly, in addition to the taking over of some discos, uh, the federal government uh, also in December announced that it will be selling, uh, you know, some stakes, about 40% or thereabout of stakes in, in, in discos. I wonder what uh, your reaction to this as a way to rescue the sector is. Okay, I will repeat what I've said elsewhere. I will repeat that here. And I want people to please listen to this. If a house is structurally defective, if there is a defect on a building, and that building is about to collapse, and then the landlord comes in and says, ah, this house. Okay. He now start painting the house. He changed the furniture to brand new furniture. Have you addressed the structural defect? The answer is no. You do not address a structural defect by changing furniture. Mm -mm. What you need to do is to look at where are the corners or part of the structure, the pillars, the columns that is creating this structural defect. So when you send personnel, either at the disco level or anywhere, and you think sending some people away, bringing in some people without addressing the root cause of the problem or where the problem is, we are still going, we are still going around the same 
uh, roundabout. And I've seen a lot of that happen in this sector since 2013. So whether or not Pelagrin want to de uh, devolve or sell their shares, that is not the issue. The issue is still the issue of this, the old structure. How do we make the sector liquid? Whether you change personnel or you change or sell shares, it, it, has not the liquid, it cannot create the liquidity that's required until you take the right step and do the right thing. We cannot continue to be self-serving. Some people cannot say the truth. They don't want to either lose their job or lose the favor that they get from government. But it is better for all of us to say the truth. And that's why I said, Mr. President should be allowed to watch television. No? Mr. President should not be too busy not to be able to see what people are saying outside. Ilulio, things are hard. And that is why we, at the disco level, we are at the receiving end. When people don't have light, who do they blame? Discos. Are we the one that produce electricity? Are we the transporter of electricity? But we cannot blame our colleagues because they have challenges. Let us work to ensure that the value chain works. Help the genkos, help the transmission, help the discos. Let us all too, as disco, be more efficient, but we are not efficient enough. We need to also take our customers as king. We need to do the right thing to so all of us. And we know that, and we're trying our best to do that. And I can tell you that we've done better today than we were doing in 2013 or 2014 after privatization. So I think, to some extent, the system is not really uh, as bad as it was, but it can be better than it is. That's where I look at it. All right, a fine place to rest our conversation uh, this time around. So, Dr. Oduto, we thank you very much uh, for speaking with us. Of course, Mr. Oduto the, is the executive director research and advocacy of the Association of Nigeria Electricity Distributors. Many thanks again.